probably heard about black holes, evil celestial objects that swallow astronauts and clocks. Do black holes exist? One individual who questions their existence is Steve Crothers. Australia's very own homegrown Einstein. Indeed, Mr. Crothers is Tasmania's answer to Einstein. You don't want to mess with a Tasmanian devil. He knows black hole theory like the back of his hand. On the other side of the coin is Mr. Avishay Gallium, a mathematician who believes in these magical entities. Mr. Gallium's opinion is important because he is one of those secret peer reviewers, a hooded inquisitor who has the authority to censor the work of dissidents. Space.com, a popular scientific news site, recently synthesized the conclusions of the last paper Mr. Gallium wrote for Nature. Scientists managed to observe a supersized supernova explosion from start to finish, including the black hole ending. The star has now become a black hole. The suspicious dark angel appears in Gallium's presence at the speed of thought. As an observational astronomer, you of course know that nobody has ever found a black hole. To invalidate the concept of the black hole, it is sufficient to show that the infinitely dense point mass singularity of the alleged black hole violates the theory of relativity. Infinite densities are forbidden by special relativity. Since general relativity cannot violate special relativity, general relativity too, ipso facto, forbids infinite densities. Confronted by his inescapable logic, Gallium instantly retracts his claim. We agree that our work does not provide direct observational evidence for the formation of a black hole. But the devil is not there to pussyfoot around. He demands more than a personal apology. Your reports misrepresent the facts. Will you publish retractions? Gallium replies that other people are responsible for his beliefs. Their strong observational evidence from other wakes supporting the existence of black holes. That's funny. It turns out that the other authors believe in the existence of black holes because of papers like Gallium's. So this is how tens of thousands of physicists end up believing in black holes. Another black hole enthusiast is Mr. Stefan Gillison, whose team makes a bold claim. The most spectacular aspect of our long-term study is that it has delivered what is now considered to be the best empirical evidence that supermassive black holes do really exist. The devil appears in a flash of blinding light. It has been claimed by the astrophysical scientists that a black hole has an escape velocity greater or equal to C. However, according to the alleged properties of a black hole, nothing, not even light, can leave the black hole. So the black hole has no escape velocity. The claims are contradictory, nothing but a meaningless play on the words escape velocity. You are right that it is meaningless to talk of an escape velocity. But this is the only way to explain a black hole to the general public. The devil is not fooled by this lame excuse. There are no solutions to Einstein's field equations for two or more masses. Therefore all talk of black holes interacting with anything is just wishful thinking. I agree. A Schwarzschild black hole is highly artificial since it really is a whole universe with one black hole and nothing else. The concept might be questionable, but it, it is correct to the observable order. That is at least something. Ah, oh, brother. Now the devil is really ticked. Gillison is just trying to avoid punishment. The alleged signatures of a black hole are an infinitely dense point mass singularity and an event horizon. Nobody has ever found an infinitely dense point mass singularity and nobody has ever found an event horizon. So nobody has ever found a black hole. You are right. We find a very high mass in a small volume. One cannot believe in singularities since it would require knowing the physics of the Planck mass scale. I doubt that astrophysicists in general believe in the reality of the singularity. Did Gillison's team publish a retraction of their false claims after the devil left? Take a guess. Yet another defender of the faith is MIT's Edwin Taylor. Mr. Ed used to be the editor of the American Journal of Physics and wrote a book called Exploring Black Holes. The feared Tasmanian devil decides to check the soul of this famous educator. The fact is, rich equals zero violates Einstein's principle of equivalence. 
Does this teacher teach the devil some math and put him in his rightful place? Not by a long shot. Apparently Mr. Ed's math skills are not up to par with his talking skills. Wilbur, if you're right, the whole book is essentially useless and should be abandoned. Okay. I don't think the devil will have trouble with that retraction. The other day, I caught up with a devil in one of his trips, and I asked him to summarize for me why black holes don't exist. What do you think about black holes? Do black holes exist? Einstein's field equations coupled the gravitational field manifest as the curvature of space-time with its sources. The sources are described by a mathematical object called the energy momentum tensor, and the geometry is described by another mathematical entity called the Einstein tensor. Einstein alleged that by setting the energy momentum tensor to zero, he uh, uh, could obtain the gravitational field for outside a body. Unfortunately, uh, this is uh, really just a piece of sophistry. If you set the energy momentum tensor to zero, you have removed all sources for the gravitational field. By putting in the uh, words outside the body, uh, the concept of a body being present is surreptitiously introduced at the outset, even though it's removed uh, immediately by setting the energy momentum tensor to zero. Insofar as the mathematics is concerned, the quantity R that appears in the so-called Schwarzschild solution has been given various names by the physicists. This R that is appearing in their uh, equations is nothing other than the inverse square root of the Gaussian curvature of the spherically symmetric geodesic surface in the spatial section and therefore has absolutely nothing to do whatsoever with radial distance. Nonetheless, the physicists either call it a radius or, if they're a bit circumspect and use one of the other vague definitions that they have for it, well, they invariably treat it as a radial quantity and thereby drive it down to zero, violating the intrinsic geometry of this line element. The so-called Schwarzschild solution is not even Schwarzschild solution. Just about all the claims made to Carl Schwarzschild are demonstrably false. One can easily verify this by simply reading Schwarzschild's original paper. Newton's theory is a two-body configuration of matter. Um, you cannot calculate, for instance, the escape velocity uh, in Newtonian uh, configuration of matter, or you cannot calculate the Newtonian potential without resort to a two-body expression. Just because in the final expression one mass appears in the equation does not mean that the uh, relationship is not a two-body issue. For instance, uh, escape velocity, uh, one mass escapes from the other, so you have to have two masses. This is codified in Newton's relation for his gravitational field. Uh, considering the Newtonian potential, the definition of the Newtonian potential is the work done per unit mass against the gravitational field of another mass. So even though only one mass appears in the expression for Newtonian potential, the whole thing is derived from a two-body interaction. One cannot get these expressions without resort to the two-body interaction of Newtonian gravitation. Professor Borat Krasinski has no answers to the devil's arguments. He's one of those traditional relativists who falls back on authority to defend black hole theory. You understand? 10,000 doctor make study relativity over last 90 years is wrong. What is its value of science if foundations really weak and students make stupid? Well, devil, to be honest, Professor Borat's got a point there. Anyways... Stephen Crowther's is one of a kind, a precious stone among dull rocks, a needle in a haystack. There's lots of hay out there. Needles are few and far apart in space and in time. But I cannot do justice to Stephen Crowther's in just 10 minutes. If you really want to get the scoop, you're just going to have to visit his site. And for all you authors and peer reviewers out there, beware, the devil's on the loose. You haven't proven the possibility, let alone the existence of black holes, until you duped it out with Tasmania's double.